Hey everyone, uh, this is going to be, and so don't stress, uh, you know, it's going to be about a 20 minute video. And this talks about what we're doing, what I want to put out to you about winning multiple offers. Now, this is my input. This is what I think uh, there's, but you know, everything I'm giving to you is, you know, nothing's guaranteed, but I want to be able to present options to you that may contribute to your success. Uh, we're also, uh, we're going to do a, um, a round table coming up here in the not too distant future with some, some of our fathom agents to see what they do. Uh, there are a number of us that a uh, number of people that have done really well with this. And, and I want to promote this to you and let you know that this is coming out. I will also tell you that the market has changed a little bit. Um, I'm still seeing a very strong market as far as uh, sellers. It's a very strong sellers market, but I am in what you're submitting to me and what I'm reviewing seeing a few changes. And that is, uh, first of all, that uh, home inspections, uh, people are doing more home inspections and people are doing more home inspections with the right to negotiate as opposed to no home inspections or home inspection with the accept or void only. I'm not saying that that's the trend or the way we are going. I'm just seeing that, that a few more of those are coming through. Uh, so those are some of the changes. Um, I'm seeing... Uh, I would say I'm also seeing uh, financing a little different and things along these lines. But the bottom line to it is, even though the market may be changing slightly, in general, it is a very strong seller's market and sellers are being very picky. And what I want to do with this video is help you to do a better job in presenting offers and creating offers for our clients. But remember, Anything that is submitted on behalf of the client is the client's decision, whether it's a lower offer than you think or a higher offer, anything along those lines. Give them advice. I would document that if they go counter to it. But that's very important that it's their, It's what they want and it's how they want it presented. So one of the tactics I think that's useful is by the buyer offering to pay certain things. So to give you an idea. HOA and condo documents are about $265 for the seller to obtain those. So you can offer to pay for that. Um, deed prep and admin costs, let's figure that's close to about $1,000. And that's the trend that I've seen. That's about the, the prices that I've seen in a number of different uh, title companies. So paying for the deed prep, uh, you know, all the different things that the seller has to pay for the title company is an opportunity to do something for the seller. Transfer taxes, okay? So um, you've got to look at the fact that if you live in Stafford, Spotsylvania, Fauquier, um, Culpeper, et cetera, things like this, it's only a dollar per thousand, okay? Dollar per thousand. So on a $600,000 house, you can offer to pay the transfer taxes. That's great. But let's look if you live in Prince William, if you're, you're, our client is buying a home in Prince William, Loudoun, or anything east and north. We have a dollar per thousand for grantor's tax. So on a $600,000 house, that's 600 bucks. We also have WMATA fee, which is the Washington Metropolitan Area Transportation Authority. That This used to be the congestion relief fee, but that's actually now separate. And the WMATA fee is $1.50 per thousand. So on a $600,000 home, that's $900. And then you have the congestion relief fee of 50 cents per thousand. So that's $300. So that total amount on a $600,000 home is $1,800. Okay. So if we just take a look at that amount, that's over $3,000 that our buyer can pay on behalf of the seller which makes their sheet, okay, and the CD much cleaner. Uh, another idea, you know, you could very well say we'll contribute $500 towards the seller's moving expenses, things along these lines that you can do, okay? But that's more mushy and not quite. So I would go with things that were concrete, like the HOA uh, fees, the uh, admin fees to do the settlement, and the uh, grantor's tax, the transfer taxes. OK, and yeah, the decision by the seller may basically just be purely price based on price. But the perception that our buyer is willing to do different things and go an extra mile for the sellers may very well 
do a lot towards that and that perception of, okay, they really want the property. It makes their settlement cleaner. And, you know, it just is, is a tactic that we can use. Uh, price, price, price. Everybody talks about price. And price is important, but it's not the be all and end all. But let's take a look at price. If you're using an escalation clause, if our client is using an escalation clause, that we want to take a look at doing something in an odd figure. And so, for instance, we'll take a look at a house that is at 550. Okay. So at $550,000 is the list price. So now you're going to do an escalation clause. And let's say you're going to do an escalation clause. Our client wants to go no higher than $580,000. You say to them, look, let's do that, but let's do it in $600 increments. Most of the escalation clauses are done in $500 or $1,000 increments, okay? By doing it in $600 and setting it above that $600 above their final price, you're making our client stand out. So $550, everybody's thinking $580. So everybody does $580,000 at $1,000 increments. And you do $580,600 in $600 increments. So everybody tops out of 580, you got five other offers topping out of 580. And now our clients 580, 600. Now, that's not a significant amount of money, but again, sends the message that you're creative, that you're professional, you've thought this through and your client is interested, okay? The other thing as far as, a, as an addendum in addressing price difference. Now, I'm gonna be sending something out to you from Wayne Lee in the language that he uses, which is really good. Uh, but the addendum addressing the price difference, this is what I want you to look at. Uh, the appraisal, when we look at the appraisal, obviously uh, the, the appraisal is important. And in an offer that's very strong, very high, in many cases, our seller, I mean, our buyer is going to have to bring more money to the table. So let's take a look at that $550,000 house. And our client wins the, wins the offer at $580,000. So the language essentially would be that our seller, I mean, our buyer will pay the seller X number of dollars above appraised price. So let's, for sake of argument, go $10,000. So the list price is $550. The sale price, our contract price is $580. And in the addendum, it says, and this is without an escalation clause, this was just what we put out. In the addendum that's submitted with the offer, it says along the lines of, hey, the buyer will pay in a, up to an additional $10,000 above appraised price with a maximum amount of $580,000. So what this means is that if it appraises at 570, they pay 10,000, everybody's happy it's at 580. If it appraises at 560, now they go to 570. If it's at 57, appraises at 575, they pay the extra five and they're at 580. But it says that the, our buyers are willing to and understand they're going to bring X number of dollars. OK. And again, five thousand doesn't isn't meaningful. Ten thousand dollars is OK. Twenty thousand. But it all depends on what our buyer has. OK. And what they're willing to do. So they'll be making up the difference to a certain point based on the appraisal. OK. And again, Wayne Lee has a great thing that I'm going to be sending out to everybody. So here's some other miscellaneous thoughts as to things that will make your offer, our client's offer, that you're making on their behalf, possibly a little stronger. And that is, first of all, to have them waive any condo or HOA violations, okay? So, you know, it's all good to, to ha have the HOA docs and they come in and they have a list of violations being, for instance, uh, the, the deck was not, uh, the deck color was not approved by the uh, Architectural Review Board. When we say we're going to waive that, we're not going to force you to do that. It cuts that out completely. Again, it relieves either upfront, which is what I would do in the in the offer, or in the addendum, or when it or you know when these come in to you know if you want to protect our client as far as in, in case there's something very expensive or egregious. But again, it takes that monkey off the seller's back, and it tells them that you have advised them and thought things through. Okay. Next thing is be very bold with the EMD. Um, I recommend 2% at a minimum. I really recommend 2.5% at a minimum, okay? And again, this could very well, and the reason I say 25 is 
it may very well reflect about what that um, that commission is that our buyer is willing to risk up to the commission that's being paid to the brokerage or the commission that's being paid to the seller. I mean, to the listing agent. It just it correlates that that hey yes we're really interested we're very strong and although it may be a minor correlation it is something there. I would also get your lender involved. Okay, uh, I think that's very very important. Uh, not only should the lender be writing a strong pre-approval letter, but some of the things that they ought to include in there, if they don't already, is the fact that the credit has been checked and income verified. Okay. In addition, the bank statements have been submitted and examined. And the only thing lacking right now is the con sales contract and appraisal and final underwriting. Lay that out and have that laid out in the in the lender letter. So there's no question that our buyer is set to go and financially sound. You know, one of the things I'm sure you've ever heard or you hear as a listing agent is, well, will the, will the seller, will the buyer be able to qualify really? I mean, this is great that we've got this offer, but how strong are they? And so a strong lender letter saying things like this is important. Okay. Uh, and, and I would also, with our buyer's permission, okay, and I would send them an email to say, I encourage you to allow me to have the, my, your lender, your loan officer, call the listing agent, have the loan officer call the listing agent and tell them how sound the person is. At a minimum, get permission for the listing agent to call your lender, to call the lender themselves. I think that's very important. Again, that, again, gives a sense of professionalism and strength from our buyer. Speaking of professionalism and likability, that's one of the things that, you know, when we look at, we want, uh, we want people to understand that we are professional and that we as agents are likable doesn't mean that we're going to waver and not represent our clients. But that, and we've all dealt with the agent where you go, holy crap, who is this person? So being professional and likable is a strong part. So as far as professional is concerned, complete the offer. Make sure all the documents are complete. Make sure that everything's in there and the way they're supposed to be. Don't have any ambiguities. If in Bright MLS, there's not the lead-based paint or the residential property disclosure, you know, obviously everything has the residential property disclosure, but even the lead-based paint, if it's applicable, if it's not in there, call and ask or email the listing agent right up front say, hey, I'm going to show your property. Uh, I noticed that such and such is not in the MLS yet. Uh, just in case my clients are very interested, can you email this to me? So that again, you have that, you're showing forethought, you're showing professionalism. If you're going to make an offer, call the other agent. At a minimum, email them. But I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm reluctant to tell you just to email because it drives me crazy when all an agent wants to do is email and text. Call them, pick up the phone, and ask them for their and their clients' preferences. Where's the seller going to be settling? Put that in the other remarks, okay? Uh, where notifications need to be sent. So that's put in in the, in the offer rather than having them try and fill that out separately or in addition, okay? What's the preferred settlement date? Our client may be very flexible, but their client may be more on a time schedule. So if we can accede to their wishes, it again makes it more attractive. And the fact that you've taken that into consideration for our client that them, the listing agent, and their client, again, denotes professionalism, denotes an understanding of what's going on. Um, ask them, hey, look, I have provide a really good, strong lender letter. Is there anything that you need? And they may go through and tell you, ah, that's okay, just a strong lender letter. And that's fine. Or they may list the things that I've already told you to have in the lender letter. Okay. And I would also ask them, what is it that will help separate our client's offer from the other offers that they may receive? Now, they may say, well, price, we know that, but is there a condition? Is there something they need? Is there something they want? Things along these lines. And finally, as far as professionalism and likability, fill out the bottom of the offer. You're going to fill out all our stuff. You should be. Everything for us as far as the buyer brokerage but fill out the things for the listing brokerage, okay? Put that all in there. Again, it shows attention to detail. 
Okay. It shows that you are a professional and that you've gotten the information that's needed either from their advertising, from the, with the marketing that they have for the house, from the MLS listing, or from going in and doing research. Put that crap in there. Okay. One of the things that I always look at as a listing agent is will this close? Okay. I go to my client and I say, look, these are the offers. I, this, these are, you know, what you've got, but I really think this one has a better likelihood to close. And a lot of times it's because I know the reputation of the agent. I see the paperwork that they've submitted and the professionalism. You know, you don't want the listing agent to go, well, it's a great offer, but, you know, based on what I'm saying, I don't know what the likelihood is it'll close. It was a you know, marginal lender letter and they haven't done anything very professionally. So that is that an indicator? Okay. Um, whoops. Love letters. Okay. I want to talk to you about love letters. All right. NAR does not endorse or encourage love letters. Okay. But they have also not deemed it a fair housing violation. Okay. I was in class the other day and a friend of mine who's a great instructor and a great fair housing uh, instructor talked about how bad lender, uh, love letters are. And it is a, could be a clear violation of fair housing, et cetera. And I do agree with them to an extent, but I don't fully agree with them. NAR has not banned them. NAR discourages them. But I think that there's a tie there, okay? Uh, be careful of what you're doing. But to give you an instance, Kathy and I bought a house this past October. Uh, one of the determining factors, uh, sorry for me giving commission up, was the fact that in that lender and in that love letter, we talked about this providing an, air, an area where I am right now, an office for my military things, for, for when I was, you know, all the different things. I have a number of different things in here that you can't see, but that are based on my Naval Academy and my military service. And that we noticed that we saw that the, the seller was very into crafting and embroidery and sewing, et cetera. And my wife couldn't, couldn't wait to get into a place where she could do that. None of that deals with fair housing, okay? That's okay. I, you know, I, I fully encourage you. If that's what your seller wants, I'm just telling you to be cautious. I mean, your buyer wants, but I'm telling you to be cautious. Here's what you can't do. Include anything based on a protected class. Oh, uh, we saw that you had inspirational messages around. And as a fellow Christian, I, ah, nope, done. Don't do that. Uh, I noticed that uh, that you have a lot of African art here and being uh, African-American myself, I eh, no, don't do that. OK, can't do that. These deal with protected classes. You cannot do that. In addition, health issues. Uh, I saw that you, you know, you were selling your house and it looks like you had a hospital bed there. And my mother in law lives with this and she has a debilitating disease and and she's in hospice. And I understand ah, now we're not only violating fair housing and disability, we're now going into HIPAA violations. Be very, very careful. OK, nothing that will be construed in even remotely with fair housing. OK, now, the one thing I will not do is photos. Please don't submit photos. And if you're listing. If you're doing listings, do not accept photos, okay? And you go, well, Mark, you know, um, so uh, you don't want pictures of the Hispan my Hispanic family. I mean, they see on the contract they're Hispanic. It's a difference. You know, remember, it's not only country of origin, ethnicity, but, okay, and, and a race and all the other things, but it's national origin, okay? And the fact that you may have a family from who has a Hispanic name and there's a picture of them in the village in Guatemala. And that, no, no, done. You can't do that. OK, things and photos are very much going to impact you fair housing wise. What if you are a Asian seller? You are a, you have we have a seller who's Vietnamese. And the photo comes in from another, from a buyer, and they are also Asian and they choose them. Is there not the possibility, all things being equal, that a white or a black family couldn't come back and go, wait, wait a minute, do they choose them because? So photos are a no. Don't submit it and don't take them, okay? If you receive something, please don't, don't press on with it. So here's the bottom line, guys. 
The decision is that of our clients as to the offer that we present on their behalf. We operate on their direction with their guidance. We offer opinions and thoughts, but based on not only our Virginia law, but um, the National Association of Realtors, Realtor Code of Ethics, we are doing things on their behalf and we are to follow their direction. Be professional, be complete, okay? Make it so that that listing agent and that seller wants to sell to your client, to our client, because of the way we've presented ourselves and our offers, okay? We also need to discuss with our clients what the risks are, how things go, how risk averse are they? How much are they willing to spend in time and offers? We may have a buyer that says, look, I do not have the time to mess around, nor do I have the bandwidth. I'm stressed enough, my wife is stressed enough, or my husband is stressed enough, or whatever, and I just, I'm willing to make a bold offer. Or, you know, geez, I really don't want to pay too much. And talk to them about their risk aversion, okay? The risk of continuing to do this, the risk and uh, what, and the stress as far as making countless offers, okay? Not forcing them to do anything, but understanding where they come from. You may have somebody that says, look, I, we need a home, but I'm willing to take, you know, take my chances a little bit, you know, but, and by the fourth one, they may be completely risk averse. Okay. So understand that and understand how to describe to them what sound offers are and what you're going to be doing in their place. If we have a buyer who wants to waive the home inspection, who wants to waive the, um, waive the appraisal, anything along these lines, it's important that you use the NVAR Purchasers acknowledgement of potential adverse risks that does not go with the offer that you submit, but have them sign that understanding what the risks are. Because what we also don't want is somebody to come back and go, well, you told me to that it was OK to waive the home inspection. No, I didn't. I had this. Well, that's not what I heard. And, and I wanted to have the home inspection, but at least by having them sign this, they understand that. And again, remember that the offers that are presented and how things are done are based on what our clients want. We need to advise them and educate them, but it is up to them. Okay. So I'm going to be doing a number of these. We'll uh, have a couple of different panel discussions on different things, but uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye.